It's Elena Doverly, and as you know, we have just launched our 3D editor. It's still in use beta version, and today I'm going to walk you through our, its basic features and also the platform itself and how you can use it to bring your augmented reality 3D experiences to life. As with beta versions, we're super open to any feedback, so you can send us an email or leave a comment below and just let us know what you think and maybe what features we should be adding. I am going to get straight into creating uh, the 3D augmented reality experience. So just wanted to note if this is the first ever augmented reality experience that you're creating with Overly, I would suggest that you refer back to our older blogs, which uh, cover how to create your first workspace project and the first augmented re reality experience in general. Because here I am already have set up my first projects, I'm in my workspace, and I'm just going to go ahead and add a new marker. And again, if this is your first <laughs> augmented reality project, also I would uh, advise that you go through uh, our blog, which covers how to create effective markers, because that's really, really important to ensure that your project actually comes to life. Trigger images are very important. All right, so once you uploaded your trigger image or marker image, however you prefer to call it, you will see on the left-hand side a selection of content types that you can upload. When it comes to 3D experience, you can still upload AR buttons here. Other than that, everything else is locked once you select 3D object. So let's go ahead and see how our 3D creation platform looks like. So I'm clicking here. And straight away, I'm taken to this new screen. And I have a couple of options how I can create augmented reality experiences here. I can either use some of those 3D models that we have just selected as demos just to test the, out the platform, or I can upload my own 3D models. Uh, currently, the platform accepts FBX, GLTF, GLB, and ZIP files, which are a uh, maximum size of 25 megabytes. There are also some uh, other aspects that you have to kind of explore when you are creating your own 3D models. So we do have a blog that I will link below that you can use to create 3D objects in Blender, which is actually a free platform, and we would uh, recommend using that. Also, if you are downloading your 3D objects from Sketchfab, I think it's just worth if you go through our written blog because there will be some other tips on how to ensure that the file you're downloading is actually going to be compatible with augmented reality. And uh, that's quite important, especially if you're not downloading free files, but you have something that you want to purchase. All right, so let's go ahead and start creating. For this example, I'm actually going to upload a 3D object. It is uh, a file, GLTF file, and it is... Uh, a file of a statue that we have uh, captured ourselves in our photogrammetry setup. So, but uh, that's not the, as important as the fact that it's a 3D file. And I will walk you through the things that you can do here. So, I have uploaded marker, and now I also have a 3D object. If I want to change a view of how on what uh, or the angle that I'm looking at this. Uh, project from, I, all I have to do is just click anywhere around the object in the, in the screen, hold on, and move my mouse and leave it the way I want it to be. So I'm actually going to uh, look at the marker from the top because usually when it's a marker-based augmented reality experience, if it's like a postcard, people will scan it from, from the top. If it's maybe Painting uh, is going to be from the front, but either way, you want the content that you're going to put on top of it to kind of come out from the front. So that's something you have to consider. And you can actually use these buttons here to ensure that your model does just that. So the first button that you're going to see here at the top is translate button. And all it really means is that you can use these arrows, colored arrows here, to move the object. So it's backwards and forwards, left and right. And you can also, I will just change my view a little bit. You can also use this button to move the object 
down. So I'm going to leave the object here. Change my view uh, to the top again. And uh, I also wanted to let you know that you can use the corresponding boxes. So whichever arrow you select, it's going to turn yellow. You can also select the box, which is the corresponding box to the arrows, and move the object in the direction that you want. And uh, also, at the crossroads of these arrows, you will find like a diamond shape uh, square that you can also click on and hold on to and then uh, be able to move the object more dynamically. That's really about positioning your object. And the next option that we have is rotation. So as I said, you will probably have somebody stand at your marker image like this. So you can use the rotate function to ensure that your object looks at the person that is actually scanning the marker image. So that's what I'm doing here, ensuring that once the person scan is, they are actually facing the object. However, with the augmented reality, you know, if it's 3D, people will be able to move their phones around it and they will be seeing the object from different angles. It's just you have to think what you want the first experience to be. But uh, for this example, I'm rotating it just so the statue is facing the person who scans the project. So the next button here is scale. And uh, this is actually locked, as I mentioned before. If you were to select one arrow here, you will see that it turns yellow and you're only controlling the movement from side to side. However, here, whichever direction or axis you choose, the scaling is happening in all directions. And uh, we've actually locked it to ensure that your object doesn't go out of shape if you start scaling one side and then maybe, you know, gets wider and doesn't simultaneously follow and the sizing to all sides, so it will be just looking out of shape. At the end. So that's why we've locked it to ensure the dimensions stay intact. All right. So here you, it's pretty understandable that uh, you can use this button to delete the uh, 3D object. Here is um, backwards, forwards, if you want to change your mind about some of the movements. And on the right hand side, you can see that there is uh, the same. So position, rotation, scale, the same, same uh, headings, I'd say. And as you move the object around, you also see that actually these numbers change. So for some people that understand the axis and the degrees and uh, are better with numbers, they may know that the location is specific to concrete numbers. So you can actually click here and type the numbers to ensure that the object aligns with the marker in a way that you want to. And once you are happy with the location, all you have to do, you just have to hit publish and the project is going to be live in a few seconds. And that's pretty much it. I would still suggest that you do go through our written blog because we will also um, talk you through some, uh, knee, some, some bits of how to make sure that the uh, 3D model that you download um, is, you know, easy to use and also works on the, the platform and also works for augmented reality. But um, we will also be creating more videos just to make it easier for you to use the platform. I will include the way this uh, project looks uh, at the front or at the end of this video, just so you know. And also the blog that I will link below will include a marker image that you can scan and also see how how the 3D experience feels when you do it through your phone. And again, if you do have any questions or comments, please leave them below and we will be sure to get back to you. Thank you very much.